what's going on YouTube Scram here coming at you with some more video of the RGT Adventure V2 I also have an element Sendero here as well we're gonna go over a few quick easy mods that anyone can do and you don't have to spend a lot of money or no money at all so to start this off the simplest thing you can do is when these vehicles come bare stock We'll get this top off. And you look at your suspension, you'll notice that there will be a little O-ring in here. And it's gonna kinda look like so. I can get my camera to focus on that. Just a little rubber ring. There we go. And basically all that's doing is holding your suspension a little tighter and uh, I personally like it a little softer so it's very easy if you look real good in here you notice how there is a line opening there well you can pull that o-ring down and then get some snips cut it and pull it out and then you can also save those o-rings if you don't damage them too far because well you'll be able to put them back on but personally I prefer the softer of it I would rather not have bounce be bouncy seeing as the Adventurer V2 is a lot taller than say your typical smaller truck here this also came with a spare tire I I do like the looks of it but I did take it off just because it does make it a little more top heavy unfortunately but it definitely still looks cool so if you take off all of those little spacers holding your suspension a little tighter, you'll definitely get a lot more movement. And to me, that's uh, that's more important to me. I'd rather like to see the flex. All right, guys, and up for another easy, quick mod you can do to your Adventure V2 or really any of these 124 scale crawlers that use the same basic chassis setup i know axials are a little different most of them have uh they don't have to worry about this problem that you're about to see because their servo is mounted slightly farther back well if you look here when i push down on my sendero on the front there's there's nothing there there's no downward suspension travel really at all i still get side to side but there's nothing there now, if I look at my Adventurer V2, you can see there's actually more play there. It's not much, but there is more. So that's going to help with your articulation and getting over obstacles. Now, how to do this is pretty simple. And this works, again, for your Element Sendero and your Adventurer V2 and basically any, any one of these 124 scales that use the same chassis setup. So, as I stated, here's your steering servo. So, if you look, that servo, it's screwed down onto the chassis, and right there, it's supposed to, that's where it normally sits. Well, I've got some lock washers, some spacers put in there. Mind you, these were like cents at, the, uh, at Home Depot or wherever your local store is so i just put a couple of them in there and i did the same for the the back of it so now my servo is mounted higher and underneath you can see where it comes down and drags across see if we can make out the difference here you can see that the adventurer has a little bit more of an angle there and that's simply because all I did was raise the height of the steering servo. So where it hits under here, it now has the ability to go further because this entire mechanism is up higher. Now, you could potentially go really high with it, but you may run into problems. But a few millimeters of space and look at how much more travel you get. So I, the way I see it is any little bit extra movement that you can get definitely helps because obviously the back has tons of suspension 
So now the front has a little bit to match it. So that, to me, increases your crawling a little bit better. I also, as you can see, my rear bumper is a little loose, and that's simply because I chopped it off because they are, they does stick out a little bit more, and I just think they look goofy. So I cut it, and I just need to tighten them down a little bit better. But it looks more true to form with the body on it. Same thing with the front. I'm hoping to cut that and get that a little closer to the body. Another quick easy mod that you can do, and I have a little bit of a warning about this mod as well, is those simple clips that you took off, the little spacers that you took off from your suspension, well, you can take those clips, so these little black ones, if I can grab this again, yep, this little black O-ring, I kind of screwed this one up, but you get the idea. This was on the shock tower. Me, I went to Home Depot and just got a bunch of little, little spacers. Well, if you don't want to spend the money to get wider axles or big spacers, you can pick these up for next to nothing. They're just metal little locking washers. And it's got to be small because if you look on your Adventurer, Sendero, etc., you'll see how you have the hex uh, nut in here so that it fits onto the axle. If I take this little washer, just stick it in there, and you can see there's plenty of room for it, and it fits. And I haven't gotten fully rid of the gap. Well, on my rig, I'm running two of those little spacers per, per tire. Well, me not really thinking about it all that much, I put the two on. I tightened down the tires as much as I thought was necessary. And I was driving around all day, actually... If you've looked at my previous video, that's basically what I did going through the woods, the water, you know, rocks up and over everything. It was a great day. Well, at the very end, I was driving around on pretty much flat ground with a little bit of little bit of rocks. And I went to take a turn and all of a sudden I was like, the tires were spinning and I'm like, what's going on? Why, why am I not able to get over this? This doesn't even seem possible. Well, I actually walked up to the vehicle and, well, believe it or not, the tire fell off because, well, your threads, it basically just backed itself off ever so slowly and then finally fell off enough and I lost the tire. But I was able to grab the tire, but I also lost the, the nut, which is really sad because, you know, these aren't the easiest things to get, but... I was like, well, that really sucks. And it popped up in my head like, oh, yeah, I'm an idiot. You need to get yourself, if you're going to do this type of mod or any sort of mod to your axle where you're going to have less thread, you should be using some sort of compound like this Mega Lock here. You basically just put this around the threads on the tire. So what I mean is like right, let's say here. And you're going to just glob it on there. Put your spacers on there. Nice and globbed up. You can even take the, the nut from the outside. Glob it all up. Put your tire on there. Make sure the tire is nice and tight. And it's as far on as it's going to go. And just crank it down. I mean, you don't want to really over tighten these tires. But you obviously don't want them you know, very, very loose either. So... Tighten them down to you, your heart's desire. Wait for that thread lock to do its thing. And no more problems. I've learned my lesson kind of the hard way. But unfortunately, it is what it is. But with that on there, now you won't have to really worry about your tires and your bolts just backing off and it falling off on the trail and potentially losing not just your nuts here but your entire tire so real quick i wanted to show you at ground level the difference is between having your servo mounted higher up and having it right on the chassis right where it sits now again this isn't for all 124 scale my friend is who's got axial truck 
the servo is actually built in a little farther back so that it doesn't really hit. Well, on the Adventurer V2 and Enduro Sendero, unfortunately, your steering servo is most likely going to hit your front axle or pumpkin, depending on your setup. So, again, here we go. These Adventurer, I put a couple of those little spacers on that servo and just for the record I wanted to say that does not affect your steering whatsoever. I've not noticed anything different from it. Only difference is now I have a little bit more suspension play. So strictly up and down movements. Okay, here we go. This is the Sendero. There is almost none. It's pretty much all tire. As you can see, um, the only way for me to get any flex is either a side to side or I got to really squish it. Now with the Adventurer V2, I know it might not seem like much, but without even really squishing anything, I've got a good amount of play on top of the flex, just like the Sendero. But that little bit of extra play could be the thing you need to just get yourself over some sort of object. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you can take these mods and do it to your rigs, especially if you're not really sure you want to really tear down your vehicle. So these mods pretty much take almost no know-how. Anyone can do it and it's pretty simple and it does give you good benefits. You get a wider, more travel, and you can only go from there. If that works for you, great. If you if you like that, but you find out that you want to replace the parts and do the full upgrades, that's awesome too. But these are just a few, and I hope they help you. And one final thing, uh, a lot of people watch my channel because I do a lot of extreme tests with my Sonom XP8 extreme phone here. Well, guys, definitely still got the phone. I still will be smashing and bashing this. No worries on that front, but on to the next one.